Excellent. What's up guys, welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my builds video for October 2016 and I do these videos at the beginning of every month. This is gonna be a couple parts lists that you can use as starting off points for your own builds or you can just you know build them as I tell you to just right here. Now if you're looking for the actual assembly, you should check out my builds playlist which is linked in the video description below. Last month I did a $500 build um, which I just actually assembled and put the video out for earlier this week. So check that out, I actually did a full tutorial from a beginner's perspective so if you've never built a system before, that is a great starting off point. Now I do try to build one of these systems every month. For this month, I'm actually going to be upgrading this system, so I'm kind of making this into a bit of a two-parter. But check out that original build video if you want to see how that one was done. There is some fan interaction though, so check out the description as well for links to these straw polls where you can vote. Now this was last month's straw poll, and you guys voted for me to do a mid to high end $1,500 gaming PC with Windows monitor and peripherals, which I kind of did. I also tried to combine that with the spooky Halloween themed build since it is October. So those are you're going to get both of those. And then um, just because I'm obstinate, I also am doing the upgraded $500 build as my second build. Although I did three different versions of it. So technically this month you guys get four builds instead of just two. Uh, be sure to vote for next month. What p PC builds do you want to see in November? Uh, dual system living room build. I, I put that up there again. Salvage build bit built from the bones of an old system. $750 build or a fastest mini ITX build. All right, let's dive right into the uh, actual builds for this month. I use PC part picker for these. And again, links to these full things are in the description. So um, here's my $1,500 build. I started off going for something akin to the $1,200 build that I did just a couple months back. Um, and then what I ended up doing was really going for all of the black and orange parts I could possibly find and it ended up making the system very expensive uh, but also Halloween themed so the black and orange is the Halloween theme and the spookiness comes from the fact that a lot of these parts are really really difficult to find or grossly overpriced if you can find them. So at the heart of the system is a 6600K, kind of the standby in the 200 to $250 range for a CPU overclockable quad core from Intel LGA 1151. And then since it doesn't come with a cooler, I chose this Enermax ETS T40 FBK. This is kind of a smaller version, the uh, fit version of their black twister fan, the ETS T40 that I've recommended a lot. So it's a little bit smaller, but still seems to perform quite well from the reviews I've read so far. Um, but I don't want to use the fan that comes with it. We'll be replacing the fan with special fans in just a moment. Now, if you want an orange and black motherboard, again, very challenging to find. There were actually a lot of these in Z97. Gigabyte was doing a series of them, but the only real orange and black motherboard on Z170 you can get right now is the Z170X SoC Force, which came out back when uh, Skylake first launched, and now apparently is discontinued or something, because you can only really find it on eBay for like four to $500, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and if you actually look at my parts list here, it's not listed because it was not available anywhere. However, apart from just going with an all black motherboard, which you could easily do and would be much more reasonable, this, I wanted to stick with black and orange. So that's why that's there. And that's why I also got confused as I was going through this parts list. It says 1309 right now, but if you add another 200 bucks or so for a motherboard, that's about $1,500. But I didn't notice that and then I got all my parts together and then I realized I didn't have, have enough money for a monitor and all that stuff. But hey, that just goes to show that if you're parting out a system and you're being really, really picky about like color coordinating, every, color coordinating everything, it can kind of mess up your uh, price to performance ratio. And it can also make it a lot more difficult to get all the parts you want, especially if you're going for a slightly more obscure color scheme, such as orange. Anyway, though, the next spooky part I have listed here is an Avexir Core Series memory kit. Now, Avexir, I did a video on recently, a uh, very flashy, colorful memory, can be a little bit expensive. This is only 75 bucks for a 16 gig kit, but this is not the right one. I linked the red version, but they do have this available in orange. This is the Core Series uh, this is actually a DDR3 kit that's shown right here, but I've been told by Avex here they're also doing the core series at DDR4, but really, really hard to find, especially in the US. But it's black with orange LEDs, and I just uh, that's that's just what I would want to go for if I was building the system. So there you go. Uh, anyway, for a graphics card, the GTX 1070, this is from Gigabyte. The uh, 1070 G1 Gaming card has, again, black with orange, and it's a very nice, uh, well-designed card for a little over $400. You can actually get a 1070 for a little less than 400 bucks now, um, but this one's only a little bit more expensive, and this one's actually pretty well built. Uh, for power supply, I went with the Seasonic, mainly because I'm tired of using EVGA power supplies in all of my build recommendations. Seasonic is freaking awesome when it comes to power supplies. Insanely stable, uh, really well built. This one, you have to pay a little bit more for them though to get like all black cabling and stuff like this one has. They have some more reasonably priced 80 plus uh, gold 
rated power supplies, but um, the, the cabling isn't that great. And I didn't want to make this too spooky with, with ketchup and mustard cabling. Uh, anyway, for the case, I went with the NZXT Phantom. This is the new egg version, which is orange and black. And I've actually built in this system, or built in this case before. It does support EATX motherboard, so it would support that gigabyte uh, motherboard if you could find it. Uh, and I felt like, you know, for black and orange, this one works really well. I was also really close to choosing a Be Quiet power supply. Or, I'm sorry, a Be Quiet case for this one, because they have, uh, like, the, the Silence series that I have over here. Um, those are also black and orange and also a good option. Uh, the ones I found were just a little bit more expensive, though, so I went with this one. Uh, now for fans. I chose four extra Noctua fans to add to this system build, as you can see right down here at the bottom. If you buy these straight up, and these are the industrial ones that are actually brown on the corners, they're about $20 to $25 each, which is adding another $80 to $100 to the system build cost. But uh, what I really wanted to use was the Linus Tech Tips editions, as uh, demonstrated here by Luke, which are orange and black, and they're also Noctua fans, which means they're awesome. Um, but these are just, they're sold out everywhere. They were Linus Tech Tips Special Editions, and they're gone. So I don't know, maybe I could hit up Linus directly and get some for myself, but probably not. So anyway, there's my spooky Halloween build. Again, Halloween because it's black and orange and spooky because you probably can't build it yourself. Let's move over to something more reasonable though. This is my $500 budget gaming PC, which was one of my system builds for last month's September builds. And I've actually assembled this now, although I did slightly change some of the parts. So I changed up like the memory, for instance, uh, and I did go, with, well, I ended up with a different power supply, but that was simply because that's what Amazon sent me. I ordered the 450, they sent me the 700. Now, what I wanted to do with this one was provide an upgraded version of it, but there's different ways that you might go about upgrading a system like this. If you're buying all the parts outright right now, I would not say to start with this and then buy the extra parts. I would say buy all the parts you want and spend more. If you're starting out with this and you buy this now and then you want to upgrade, want to upgrade in like a month or two, then you might consider the other system parts list that, that I recommended here. So, I have three versions of this at $950, at $770, and at $740. I've basically swapped in a different processor, uh, a different graphics card, and then at least for this one, the more expensive one, Oops, wrong one. At least for the $950 one, I also upgraded the power supply because I went with the GTX 1070, which does have a 500 watt power supply recommended limit. Now, uh, I'm just gonna mainly stick to PC Part Picker on this one because I wanna be able to show you. The i5-6500 is a great upgrade to a quad core. That's what I actually have right here. And that's what I probably will be doing the system build upgrade with. Now the 6400 is very, very similar to this, but you can get it for about 20 bucks less. The main difference is that the frequency that it runs at out of the box is lower for the 6400, so the 6500 will be a little bit faster. If only we could still do non-K CPU overclocking without having to worry about the using an old BIOS and not having turbo boost and all that stuff, it would make the 6400K, uh, the 6400 the clear choice. But um, anyway, I also upgraded the motherboard with this one to a Z170 board because honestly, if you're buying a $500 PC, it makes sense to go with a B150 motherboard out of the gate because you're gonna save 20, 30, 40 bucks. That might make everything fit within your budget a little bit more. If you're buying outright, say a $700 to $900 system, I think it's worth it to spend a little bit more money on a Z170 board. This is also a gigabyte board that's gonna be a little bit higher quality than that ASRock one. Still has four DIMM slots, still has an M.2, um, but again, it's just like 20 to $25 more expensive. But Z170 means you can overclock if you were to again upgrade your processor to a 6600K, a 6700K, or one of the KB Lake processors, which are supposed to come out uh, in January or February, assuming, of course, that Gigabyte does an update to this motherboard to support that. Anyway, uh, I've used some parametric filters, which I haven't done in my build parts list very much because I like to say here, get this specific thing, but the parametric filters are very useful uh, on PC Part Picker. Basically, you can use the filters on the left side here to drill down to kind of what you want. So I chose DDR4 2400 and 2666. I wanted a 16 gig kit, two by eight gigs. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Everything else, it's gonna use the automatic compatibility filter for the motherboard I, that I chose. And then you just sort by price over here and you can choose inexpensive memory. Honestly, any of the memory down here in the 60 to $70 range will work just fine, uh, but you will wanna click in on each one to see what it looks like, because that's one of the problems with the parametric filter is you don't always know exactly what you're gonna get. Um, it's just based on the current pricing. So, you know, this might not look that great for you. So if you're, if you're shopping for these, use that parametric filter, but uh, drill down into it a little bit 
and choose just the one within this range that you find works best for you. And as long as you're getting a two by uh, or like a two by eight gig kit of DDR4 memory and it's 2400, 2666, you'll be totally fine. All right, uh, still sticking with the same solid state drive, a 240 gig. This is a really good uh, deal on an A data, and I keep talking about this one. Other 240 gig drives cost like upwards of $100, and they're really not that much faster if you're talking about a SATA drive. I again used the parametric filter here for the hard drive because I wanted to include extra storage, and that's definitely something you should start out with. Um, you can get a one or two terabyte hard drive for really cheap, but this is something that I would highly recommend seeing if you have lying around first because a lot of people have old desktop computers or even an old laptop that you can pull the hard drive out of. Just pull it out, reformat it, and pop it in your system as an extra drive. Save yourself 40 or 50 bucks to be used on a different part of your system. Other than that, I kept everything mostly the same. Still the same Fractal Design Core 1100 case. I did add an extra fan because if we're upping the hardware inside, we will want a little bit more airflow in there. Went, just went with a really simple King 120 millimeter. Uh, and then also, again, just upgraded the wattage on the power supply by uh, 50 watts to 500 watts to make sure that we have plenty uh, for that, um, uh, for, for the, the graphics card, the GTX 1070. And also, um, there's a mail-in rebate for this GP right now that makes it, um, this power supply that makes it 30 bucks. All right, so that is the system upgraded to a 6500 a 6500 and a 1070 with a couple other changes coming in at about $942. Now, if you were doing the upgrade from this system to this system, there are two things you should, well, mainly one thing you should keep in mind, which is that your existing CPU and your existing uh, graphics card, you'll need to cash out somehow. So you'll either need to take into account selling those or, um, you know, giving them away to a friend or just biting the bullet on that and, you know, taking a loss. But most people like to kind of recycle those and get a little bit more for their money. Like I said, I did two other variants of this. So this is a one coming in at $770 uh, if you buy all the parts straight up. This is still sticking with the 6500 for the CPU. Same motherboard this time. Uh, again, the parametric filter for the memory, so get whatever the heck you want. Uh, same storage configuration. I again have added that hard drive, but feel free to leave that out if you have one. That will drop another $43 off the cost of this build. One with the GTX 1066 gig. Um, in, in this particular build, which you can get for around 240 to $250 right now. And again, the same uh, case power supply and that added extra fan. $770 is the total on that one. And then one final version here. For this one, I went with the 6400. So again, about 20 to $25 cheaper for the processor. Same motherboard, same memory, same storage configuration. This time I went with an RX 488 gig, which is right in line price-wise with the 1060. So I'm not gonna tell you guys to get one or the other right now. I'll leave it up to your discretion, which of those you wanna go with. But the main actual price difference in this one, bringing it down to uh, about $742, was going with that 6400 processor. But that does give you a little bit more uh, flexibility to use that money for other parts, like getting a better uh, graphics card, for example. That's all for this video though, guys. I hope these parts lists have helped you out in figuring out what you wanna put in your own system build. Again, check out my uh, build of this system if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to put together your own computer. I have another follow-up video coming later this, uh, well, probably next week about reassembling this one or doing the upgrades on it. Um, and then I'm also gonna do a full testing video where I compare this configuration with the 6100 and the 460 uh, with the upgraded configuration, which is gonna be the 6500 and I haven't decided, probably the 480 or the 1060, but leave me a comment in the comments and let me know which of those you'd rather see. I'll try to do both, but I don't know if I'll have time. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching this video and we'll see you next time.